this would be a score analysis video of my composition and orchestration uh, for for the opening opening or introduction video of my orchestration class in the College of St. Benilde. Now, uh, since moving fully online, uh, since moving to a fully online platform, we were required by the college to prepare an introduction video to introduce uh, to students our subjects. Uh, in my case, it was orchestration for uh, eventually for film uh film composition uh and, and i decided instead of just having me on the video saying uh explaining to students uh the course the, the topics and how i grade things uh i decided to compose a film score for that video so it's this one but i, I probably will change the title eventually if i'm to release this as a published work this video is intended for lecture purposes in my class to to explain my compositional uh, process and uh, how I orchestrated my own composition. Uh, let's listen first to the whole piece. Uh, I'll just go through it in terms of composition, maybe some theory behind it, and the orchestration afterwards. <laughs> Okay, so the whole idea of this was to create something, uh, something like an adventure feel, a, an adventure cue. Not really a heroic, but uh, like a family adventure film, something like that. So I, I, I chose to write modally. So uh, for students out there who, who are tasked to write in a modal way, my recommendation is to not change chords often and make uh, the color of the mode stand out. Meaning, when you're composing your melodies uh, in a modal way, try to hit the 
the characteristic node. So in, in this case, I was writing in a Lydian mode. I think I'm in D Lydian. Sorry. G, uh, G Lydian. Sorry. G Lydian. I'm in G, in G Lydian. The characteristic note of a, a, a Lydian mode would be the sharp 4. So it, this is your, your tonal center. Your, that's your sharp 4. And then uh, the melody is based on on that. So if you look at the clarinet here, the opening melody starts off with this. So it starts on the third, fifth, and then sharp four. So I, I, I built everything on that theme. So I keep hitting that sharp four to give uh, to emphasize the Lydian, the Lydian mode, that very bright Lydian sound. Okay, so let's talk about the orchestration. For the opening, uh, let's listen to just the opening. So yeah. Just the intro. I started the intro with this run in the woodwinds, just to prepare, just to prepare this uh, downbeat here, to prepare that downbeat. Okay. And what else? Oh, okay. So I also added a rhythmic background, which is uh, the first beat and the upbeat of the second beat. There. So I'm emphasizing that rhythm pump pop 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 so that's how I emphasize that rhythm I think there's a sh some counter melodies here but not that much wait let me look Okay now for the horn the horns are just doing harmonic support So if we listen to the horns in that section Okay, so it's it's actually implying that uh, Lydian Lydian sound because of this. Wait, let me thin this out because of this sharp four. The sharp four going to the five. This one. Okay. So what else? I have for in terms of orchestration, I started the main theme really thin. So if we go to the next page, the melody is presented with a solo clarinet. My background is just that rhythmic, that rhythmic feel here in the strings. Okay, and uh, a bit of uh, accents on the first beat, just to emphasize the the tonal center, which is G. Uh, so let's listen to the opening. Okay, so that would be the opening statement. It's very thin, very intimate, uh, solo woodwind and soft background strings. And then I think I composed something like four measures to transition to the next iteration of the main theme. Okay, so it's it's basically highlighting the chord uh, with the horns here, with some textures that those bright uh, woodwind runs add texture to, to the middle ground. Your background is still that rhythm. Oh, and I also added that pizzicato arpeggio in the low strings. So let's listen to that one. Okay, so those low strings, 
uh, they're just basically uh, outlining the root and the fifth. Yeah, root and fifth, but I just altered the the rhythm. Okay, so let's continue on with the second iteration or the the development of the melody. I'm still presenting the same melody, but I'm developing the orchestration. So let's see what happens here. Okay. So now it's presented by one oboe and clarinets in uh, I, I voiced it with two clarinets if you notice clarinet one and oboe one are doubling the melody clarinet two clarinet two is uh, harmonizing the melody let's see what else is there okay in the first uh, iteration of the main theme I didn't have any horns uh, uh, helping out with the harmonic support but when I get to the next uh, iteration of the main theme you will notice that the horns are there just to give a sense of uh, development of the background material or of the harmonic support so I developed the I developed the main melody I also developed the background material I think uh, yeah it's still the same for strings okay so let's listen to the second uh, iteration of the main melody or the second second presentation of the main melody So when we get to the end of the second presentation of the main melody, uh, I started to build it up towards the, the like like a B section, the second, it's like a secondary melody. Or uh, yeah, you could you could call it a B section. So two two A sections and a B section. It's, it, it's basically a variation of the the same theme earlier. Now, if you notice, I actually moved from G Lydian. I just moved it up a fourth to C Lydian. So C Lydian wouldn't have that F sharp. So let's break this down a bit. So for this uh, variation of the main theme, I had the strings doubling. So the strings are doubling the main melody. Bass is playing the, the bass. Harp. Snare drum now has that uh, rhythmic duty. Same with the xylophone. The xylophone has rhythmic and harmonic implications here low brasses now are presenting harmonic support and rhythmic because you, you have that pump 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 that uh, driving rhythm I also added uh, harmonic support in the harmonic support which slightly acts as a uh, middle ground material in the brasses so let's listen yeah let's listen to just the brasses for this section So yeah, you have you have that harmonic support, but it has that 
uh, counter melody uh, effect to it. So let's look, uh, let's look at the woodwinds now. The woodwinds here are more of a texture background or middle ground material that adds that brilliance. I usually double uh, oboes with trumpets because of the color. So if you look at trumpet 1 and 2 and oboes, so they're doubling each other. Also, if you notice the clarinets here, they're uh, doing a different voice of the same rhythm. So they're coupling each other. Uh, bassoons would be doing what the tr the trombones are doing the low brasses so they're doubled with the low brasses okay so if you notice the development i started thin and then developed the same melody a bit uh, uh harmonizing the the main melody and then adding the horns to the middle ground and then for the va the first variation of the main theme i made the orchestration a bit larger I think uh, we have another B section here. Again, this section is presenting the same uh, material. You have the strings presenting the main the main melody they're all doubling in octaves if you will notice here a more active counter melody in the flutes uh, a flute and a piccolo playing an idea in, uh, in octaves is very well capable of projecting or balancing a counter melody over a full orchestra again oboes are doubling the trumpets uh, bassoons are doubling the, the, the trombones or are coupling the trombones the rhythm of the trombones uh, adding to that harmonic support one additional idea here was the counter melody in horn so let's listen to the brasses So for uh, for a horn counter melody, I usually have them play uh, tutti. So they're play all playing the same thing, all the all of the four horns, and then at the end of the counter mel melody phrase goes back to harmonic support. Trumpets here add that rhythmic harmonic support that acts acts like a transition going into the uh, another theme this uh, another uh it's not a variation of the theme i think this is a new theme and it's not modal it's now uh more diatonic because i think i'm on the two chord two chord going to three chord of g major uh, let me check yes so i'm now on a minor uh going to uh B minor here. So 2 and 3. The 2 and the 3 chord. Okay, so let's listen again to uh, the woodwinds of the second variation. The second, uh, sorry, the second variation of the main theme. The woodwinds here are very bright. The counter melody here, the textural runs are very bright, adding to the brilliance of the the C Lydian 
uh, si Lydian theme. The percussion section here has uh, both rhythmic and harmonic implications. So let's listen to the percussion. <laughs> Okay, so yeah, the, the playback is from Node Performer. So this is not uh, a sample, uh, a proper sample library. It's just enough to do a mock-up. Uh, that's why the timpani sounded like a machine gun for the for the rolls there. Uh, then we have the harp. Uh, let's see if we could pull up the harp. Okay, so again, it's uh, my idea there is to add brightness, uh, not so much as harmonic content or a counter melody, but to add texture to the middle ground material. Now for the the C section, the it's like a bridge, just to add variation from repeating the main theme. Uh, I went diatonic, so I'm I'm playing the two chord of a G major here. The strings are performing a coupling line ju just to add to the harmonic support there. Violas and cellos are doing a counter melody to the main theme. The main theme here is presented by trumpets and I think uh, yeah, harmonized with the trombones if you, you can see it here. The, the counter melody in the viola and cello are also doubled in uh, with the horns. So let's listen to just the strings first. Okay, so at the end there, I added that low instrument uh, melodic line. It's actually outlining a a B a B minor with a flat two, or if you could if you think of it as a B Phrygian, you could also think of that. But yeah, it's basically outlining a B a B minor, the third chord in the G major diatonic uh, scale or tonality. It's also doubled in the low brasses, so bass, trombone, tuba. It's actually harmonized. The rhythm is harmonized in the two two trombones and horns. So let's listen to the brasses on, uh, in this section. There's your trumpet melody. there so for the woodwinds uh, not much brightness is happening because I'm not adding those runs in the flutes and piccolo there are some harmonic supports here in the oboes and clarinets but mostly the bassoons are also outlining the rhythm of the main melody in the brasses so let's listen to just the woodwinds. Okay, so you, you have that uh, woodwind chords there. Okay, but in the next, it's, it's the same same idea. I'm just orchestrating it differently. It's the same, again, it's the same idea, but if you notice, we now have, I think, let's look at this, 
strings are the same strings are the same here if you notice strings are the same we now have harp for harmonic support xylophone for uh, counter melody but it also has that uh, harmonic support there uh, low brasses are still there horns are still there the woodwinds now are more active if you notice the xylophone it's actually doubling the rhythm of the woodwinds this woodwind idea so if we listen to the brasses and strings it would basically sound the same as the first phrase uh, first iteration of this secondary uh, idea But if we listen now to the woodwinds here, you add that brightness. Well, I'll solo the woodwind first and then add it to the, the brass and strings. So now let's listen to uh, the whole section. The, the whole orchestra in that particular section of the composition. So from there, we're now building up. Uh, it's basically a very long dominant chord here. So I'm, I'm going mixolydian for this one. The strings here are playing an arpeggiated line or ar arpeggiated harmonic support with an aggressive 16th note rhythm. It's notated here with a additional flag below the stem. So if you notice here, it's actually outlining an F, F9 sus chord. So it's, it, it's going to be uh, sounding more mixolydian here. Let's listen first to the section. It, if you notice, it sounds almost similar to the, to the main theme, but it's in a different mode. So slight variation there. Okay, so let's listen to just the strings. Okay, so it has that driving rhythm to it, that 16th note, rit uh, 16th note rhythm to it. And then let's listen to the brasses. The brasses here are harmonics and harmonic and rhythmic support. They're doing uh, that rhythmic punches. And uh, let's do percussion and harp. That, that glockenspiel there adds to that brightness. And lastly, let's listen to the woodwinds in this section. Uh, in this case, the woodwind, the woodwinds are presenting the melody. Uh, but they're harmonized, they're voiced. Now let's listen to the transition going to going back to the main theme. Okay. So it's still in F 
I'm still in F9 sus and then I moved it to A9 sus because I will be landing so it's kind of like a deceptive cadence uh, you would think you'd, you'd be going to a D major but then you go to the 4 chord so you're now back to G Lydian in the in the section I'm now going to be presenting again the main theme but I did a slight variation there but wait let's go back to the transition first this one let's see what I did here let's listen to just the strings there's a uh, string run here leading into the main melody again the, to the presentation of the main theme uh, the, okay now for percussion if you notice the percussion here I only have snare and then the timpani not that section this one okay then brasses this is to the brasses in this section so I started off with just the trumpets trumpets at this range even if you write forte it will be in in that tone color of their instruments where it's not yet that piercing and then if you notice, I actually gradually move it up to their higher register to get them to their brilliant color. So again, please, uh, for orchestration students, please take note of brass range. Because again, uh, as we've discussed, uh, the range affects the tone color. Uh, same with the woodwinds. Uh, also notice here, I didn't introduce yet the trombones. I introduced that thick, low brass uh, near the build-up, about two two measures before the reintroduction of the main theme. Okay, so then we move to the woodwinds. So if you notice the woodwinds here, I reserved the flute and piccolo run near the end just to elevate it to the next section, just to el to, to bring the music or, or to lead the music towards the next section so let's listen to just the woodwinds so there uh yeah so maybe we could listen again to just this build-up section going back going to the last variation of the main theme I think it's better if we play it from the build-up let's see okay so here's the build-up again before the main theme So the the main theme is again presented here, but if you uh, if you notice, a uh, more rhythmic, it has a shorter rhythm, so it has that feeling of, of having more energy. So the main melody again, we're back to G Lydian. The main melody is presented by doubling the strings. Uh, let's see what the percussion is doing here. stop there uh, because uh, just to add variation if you notice here from G Lydian actually moved it up to B flat Lydian typical uh, modulation uh, if again for for uh, for my orchestration students who are finished with 
uh, your theor theory three, uh, non-functional harmonies, constant structures. This is uh, moving the same chord by a minor third. Okay, so to give it that uh, slight variation, after four measures, I move it from G to B flat. Uh, let's listen to the brasses. Okay, so that's the B flat part of that. So it's still harmonic support, but I added that taradat 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 taradat, adding to a uh, to the rhythmic background to give it more energy near the end. Again, just to reiterate this idea, adding more rhythm to your arrangements or orchestrations or composition gives energy to that section. And then if you lessen the rhythm, you add to that stability or resolution. Think of it as tension and resolution. You add tension if you add more rhythm. You add that feeling of resolve if you lessen the rhythm. Uh, horns here are doing static harmonic support or more of the sustained harmonic support. And then let's listen to the woodwinds. Okay, so more of those bright, uh, brilliant textures in the flute and piccolo. Bassoons are actually doing coupling of what the trombones are doing. Coupling also happening here with the oboes and clarinets. Okay. So the coupling here is more of a harmonic support because the melodic presentation in octave doublings for strings from the viol violin one to down to cello is enough to carry the melody. Now let's listen to the melody as it goes up to B flat. Okay. Uh, again, it's G Lydian to B flat Lydian. So it's basically the same thing. I just moved it up by a minor third. Uh, if you notice the melody now is whole notes and I moved it even up from B flat Lydian I moved it to D Lydian so in this case it's a major third not a minor third okay so let's listen to this presentation of the main melody Okay, let's stop there for a while. So let's analyze that part. So the melody here is now stretched. Or uh, uh, it's, it's a variation of the melody that has a longer rhythm. And then you s I still have the, the brasses doing that rhythm, but I'm also adding those uh, brass runs every phrase, every end of the phrase. So let's listen to the... Yeah, so let's listen to strings first and then brasses. Okay, near the end, near the end of this statement, I have this low instrument uh, melodic presentation or counter melody presentation, which is based on uh, the D, I think it's still D Lydian. Yeah, it's still D Lydian. It's based on D Lydian, which is, again, when you're presenting those low counter melodies, most of the time you would want to double it in the low instruments. There. So bassoons, 
trombones, bass trombone, and tuba are presenting that low melodic uh, or counter melody statement. So let's listen to it. There. So let's move to percussion. Go back a bit. Okay, that rest there in the snare drum is to move to the crash cymbal for percussion too. Uh, let's look, listen to the brasses. Go back a bit. Try to anticipate this trumpet run here. I even added that uh, rip, that horn rip there. Okay. And then woodwinds. See what the, oh the woodwinds here are really bright if you notice now my flute and piccolo are more active in presenting that brilliant texture so even with the clarinets and oboes Now for the ending, I actually got this idea. One of the things that stood out for me in Ravel's Pavan was that the non-functional harmony movement, uh, that dominant nine chord that moves by a that moves by a major second down. So I adapted it here in the ending. So let's listen to the ending part of this composition. So I think my chords there was a D add 9 and then moved it to C9. B flat 9, A flat 9, then go back up to B flat 9. So it's aside from the first note, every everything else is a dominant 9 chord. Uh, yeah, again, it's from uh, a very short part of Ravel's Pavan. So let's listen to the strings in this section. Then let's listen to the percussion. Oh, sorry. Yeah, percussion. For the ending. Okay, and then brasses, the ending. So in this case for the brasses, I think I only played the root and the fifth. So yeah, yep, root and fifth. Not much of the third. If 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 you remember uh, for orchestration students again, if you remember your chord tone weighing, so most of the weight of the chord tones must be on the root, and then the fifth, and then the third, and then the seventh, etc., etc., uh, to mirror the overtone series. And lastly, the woodwinds for the ending. Okay. 
I hope you get something out of this score analysis for your final projects and I'll see you soon. Thank you.